All right, everyone. So here we go with our first kind of lecture for the semester. And as you can see, the topic is going to be about pre-civilization. So the way this is going to work and what we're going to try to do in a lot of these lectures, is we're going to have my audio. You're going to see some slides. Uh, anytime you see keywords, OK, every time you see these slides with keywords, you pause it, you get down all the keywords. In this case, the first few are just some dating things. They're not too important. But as we go through the semester, a lot of the keywords will be names of people or battles. And obviously, anytime you hear those, you not only want to write down the words. So what I would do is just write down all these words, have them on a sheet of paper on your side. And then as you're taking the notes, Write those words again, highlight them, circle them. Anything I say about those words you want to get down. Uh, as we talk about how the quiz is going to work, you know, I'll give you kind of examples as we're going through this. And a lot of the quizzes are going to be fill in the blank questions, short answer, fill in the blank questions, especially that will come from these keywords and from the lecture material you're having in these audio lectures uh, with a video too as well. And I'm going to put some images and pictures as we go through. Some of the lectures will have all the keywords up at once. Some of them will be at a few places. Uh, so you'll kind of see that as we're going through. So you get all these keywords here first, right? And what we're going to start with now is explaining just a few really basic things about some basic dating systems and terms. So you can see there it says BC, BCE. BC, of course, means before Christ. BCE is before the common era. Uh, if you've seen that before, AD is Anno Domini. It means in the year of our Lord. And CE is common era. Uh, also, if I ever go too fast, the nice thing is you can always stop, you know, backtrack and watch some of this again if you need to. Uh, so I'll always use BC and AD. I don't know if you've seen BCE and CE before. Don't worry about that. I'm just going to use BC and AD. Uh, and then you see this other thing, which is C with a period. That means circa. Uh, so that means something takes place around a certain time, right? Uh, you don't need to memorize dates in this class. You're never going to need to tell me uh, Charlemagne ruled until the year 814 AD. I know that because I do this all the time. If you just put circa 800 AD, I'm happy. Uh, do notice the dates will go down in the beginning of the semester, then the dates will go up because we go from BC to AD. So just be aware of that. Another little thing that students sometimes mix up is if I say something happened in the fifth century, right? That's the 400s. Uh, so if you think about it, then the 20th century is the 1900s, right? So just kind of think of it that way. All right. Now, when we look at Western civilization, Western civilization covers a large time period in history. And because of that, we break up all of Western civilization into these three time periods, right? And these three time periods, as you can see here, are the ancient world, the Middle Ages, and the modern world. And all three of these time periods were coined during the modern world. No one's living in the ancient world saying, hey, I live in the ancient world. And so people in the early modern world, right around this period of about 1400 AD circa, they thought to themselves, hey, we're different than the people before us. We are modern. And they said ancient world went uh, is 3000 BC to 476. And you can see the dates there. Well, as it turns out, as we go through modern history, we found that the ancient world, you know, goes back to 3000 BC, but there were people around before the ancient world. There was civilization before that. And the people before that are what we call pre-civilization. So the major objective of our lecture today, and I always do this a lot of times in the beginning of the audio lectures or video lectures or whatever I do, is I'm going to try to set what do I want you to know. And the big thing I want you to know today is pre-civilization. What happens during pre-civilization that allowed civilization to begin? So even though this is a Western civilization class, our first major lecture is on pre-civilization. So we need to explain what that is, explain the three time periods of pre-civilization, as you can see them all there. I'll give you some dates you could jot down as well here in a moment. Um, but you're going to want to know pre-civilization. You see the time period. You're going to want to know what happened in pre-civilization that eventually allows civilization to start. That's the major focus of this lecture. So pre-civilization is broken up into three periods. And as you can see here, they're called the Paleolithic, Mesolithic and Neolithic. And you see they all have something in common, this word lithic, lithic, lithic. 
So if you actually break this down, Paleolithic, Mesolithic, Neolithic, those words mean something. Paleo is the Greek word for old, like paleontologist or uh, paleo diet, right? Meso is, meso means middle, like Mesoamerica or Mesosoprano, so meso means middle, and neo is new. So then what does the word lithic mean? Well, the word lithic means stone. So when I talk about pre-civilization, it's the same as the stone ages. So old stone, middle stone, new stone ages. I didn't put the dates, but you know, I'm not going to put down every detail on these keywords. Your job is going to be to write them down. So for Paleolithic, that period of time is from about 1 million BC to about 10,000 BC. Mesolithic is going to be about 10,000 BC to 7,000 BC. And the Neolithic period is about 7,000 BC to circa about 4 or 3,000 BC. And then civilization begins. So what we're going to do now is kind of go through these periods. You're not going to really need to worry about the Mesolithic much. I'm not even going to really lecture on the Mesolithic. But the Paleolithic is pretty important. So let's go to our next slide here. And here you see some more keywords. And pretty much all of these keywords are going to be associated with the Paleolithic period. There are about five, six, seven major things you need to know during the Paleolithic period. Now, you get the keywords down, but this is another very important note taking hint. If I say there are five, six, seven things that happen in your notes, you should jot them down. One, two, three, four, five, six, whatever there are. Because on a quiz, I might ask you a question like, what are two characteristics of the Paleolithic period? Or I might pick one of these events you could see here and say this event is associated with which time period? And then you would need to know it's the Paleolithic as opposed to the Neolithic as opposed to anything else we're going to be talking about this semester. So that's kind of how you want to think about that as well anytime I say that. All right, so the first thing I want you to know about the Paleolithic period is that it is during the Paleolithic period we have the development of Homo sapiens, right? Pretty important. Without Homo sapiens, we're never going to have civilization, and that happens around the year 2000 BC. Now, again, make sure you have all of these keywords because as I go through the slides, these keywords are going to disappear, so you have to have them all written down. So that's Homo sapiens. That's the first thing I want you to know. The second characteristic of the Paleolithic period is there was glaciation. Now, why is glaciation important? Well, glaciation, first let's make sure we know what it is, it's an ice age. And during the glaciation period, what happens on the Earth's surface, as you can see here, a very interesting map, the water level on the Earth's surface actually goes down. And if you recognize this piece of real estate, I call it Beringia, but of course it's the Bering Strait. Right over here, this is the Bering Strait today between Alaska, modern day Russia, right? There's water there. But during the, pre -civil, during the Paleolithic period, there is an ice age, and instead of water, there's land there. Why does that matter? Well, it allows for human migration. One of the characteristics that I want you to know about the Paleolithic people is that the people were nomadic, right? So they were nomadic, meaning wanderers. So uh, that's an important term as well. So they were nomadic, meaning wanderers. They move around. And so they're moving around the globe, and they are able to move to North and South America, primarily because of this Ice Age. There are actually some other theories of how people got to North and South America, but this is one of the ideas. This is part of a much bigger theme we're going to be talking about all semester. So here's another note-taking hint. If I say something is part of a big theme that we're going to cover during the semester, that is not just something for a quiz or something for a, a small part of the course. That might be an entire essay topic. So what is this big theme we're going to cover? And it's geography. And I want you to think about it today. Is geography important to our world today? With all the science and all the technology and all the industry we have, if Mother Nature wants to mess with us today, an earthquake, a flood, a hurricane, whatever, you know, we're, we're just dust in the wind, right? So can you imagine to a pre-civilization or an early civilization society what a hurricane, a volcano, a desert, what any of these things could mean to a society? It would be pretty dramatic. 
And so as we go through a lot of these early civilizations, pre-civilization and early civilizations, anytime I mention geography, it's something to pay attention to. You'll have a, a chart as well that I'll help create, that I'll, I'll post for you as well. Uh, and you'll be able to use that chart to kind of help you guide you through this thing. But just definitely pay close attention to that. All right, so anyways, this is the first thing. Um, so the first development, of course, is we have Homo sapiens. The second thing is glaciation. Third basic characteristic I kind of already mentioned that I want you to know is that they were nomadic, meaning wanderers. So that's the third characteristic of the Paleolithic period I want you to know. They moved in small groups, 40 to 50 people. They were basically hunting and gathering. That's pretty much all they were doing, hunting and gathering, looking for food. Uh, tools, they used stone tools. So that'd be another characteristic of the Paleolithic period. They used stone tools. Another characteristic, and maybe one of the more interesting ones, is they had art. And a really good example of art is this image you see here. All right, so this, maybe some of you have seen this before. It's called the Venus of Willendorf image. It dates back to the Paleolithic period. It's only about four and a half inches high. It's not very big at all. Uh, but this Venus of Willendorf image is a good example of art during the Paleolithic period. Now, the question is, what are we looking at? Because sometimes art tells us something right in this case you're obviously looking at a woman and you could see obviously it's symbolism of fertility right and you go why would this be the art they create during the paleolithic period why is this their image well this is your ideal woman at this time period and you have to think of the it's logical if you're in the pre-civilization paleolithic period and you are in the stone ages using stone tools just giving birth is difficult. Giving birth today is difficult. Can you imagine giving birth with stone tools? And so this image is your ideal, right? You want women to be strong and healthy and fertile. And so people would actually wear this little image as kind of, we believe, as a kind of good luck charm almost uh, to, to help them, uh, you know, conceive and survive fertility. Sometimes I believe it's called sympathetic magic, I think is the term uh, that you would have. So anyways, you have this Venus of Willendorf image that you have there as well. So that's another characteristic of the Paleolithic period. All right. Uh, what else during the Paleolithic period? A couple other things. You had human burials during the Paleolithic period. Why is that interesting? Well, you know, animals don't bury their dead. People do. And the fact that we have human burials is kind of an indication that we realize we are more than the animals. Uh, it's a sign of self-awareness that we see during the Paleolithic period. Another interesting point about human burials is many people speculate it's a sign that people believed in an afterlife. That as early as pre-civilization, before civilization even began, there's a concept of God and a deity and a creator of some sort, or at least some sort of afterlife. It is really just kind of ingrained in us from the very, very beginnings of mankind. Uh, so that's a kind of interesting point as well. And then I guess one more characteristic is spoken language. It is during the Paleolithic period that people start to speak. We don't know exactly how and when people started to speak, but they did. And that's, of course, another important trait of the Paleolithic period. All right, so you should have all those points down. So again, you know, sometimes I'll review things briefly to make sure, you know, you can always go back and listen. But if you have all the key points of the Paleolithic period, you should know that people were homo sapiens developed, glaciation, nomadic, stone tools, art, burials, human burials, and spoken language. All right, so hope all that's clear. Let's move on. All right, so here's another set of key words. Get all these terms down. And these are the words that we're going to associate with the Neolithic period. So we don't really need to worry about the Mesolithic, but we do need to worry about the Neolithic period. And there's really only one thing that happens during the Neolithic period but it's a pretty big one, it's the Neolithic Revolution. So the question is, what is the Neolithic Revolution? Why is it so important? Well, during the Neolithic Revolution, it happens in several areas of the world uh, between about 7,000, 4,000 BC, North Africa, East Asia, but the first place is in modern Middle East, modern day Iraq, a place we call Mesopotamia. It's actually going to be an important term in our next lecture. Uh, Mesopotamia is the land between the rivers, the Tigris and Euphrates rivers, which make modern day Iraq. Uh, if you don't get the term down this time, that's okay. You'll get it in the, in the next one. 
Um, but what happens during this time period is these homo sapien nomadic people begin to figure out a few things. So this is all part of the Neolithic revolution. The first thing they're able to do is begin to understand seasons. And what I mean by that is they begin to notice it's really hot outside. And after it's really hot outside, they see the leaf changing colors, then this wet stuff comes down in the sky, and then everything turns really green, and then it's really hot outside. And they see this happening in a pattern, so they understand seasons. They also learn how to domesticize large animals, right? Domestication of animals. And when I mean domestication of large animals, I mean things like bulls and horses and oxes. One time a student said mammoth, and I'm like, no, no one had a pet mammoth at the time. Uh, but they did have these large animals that they were able to learn how to train. They also invent the wheel, round thing, rolls, yay, see, so that's good, make a little happy face, they created the wheel. Uh, amazing it took that long to create a wheel, but that's pretty important, because if you understand season, domestication of animals, and you invent the wheel, well, you can create a plow. And then I could also, this is the big one here, agriculture. This Neolithic revolution is also sometimes known as the agricultural revolution, right? And that's because these nomadic people are able to settle down in one place and create food. Now you go, okay, why does that matter? Well, that means they're no longer nomadic, no longer hunting and gatherers. They become what we call sedentary. And sedentary is just a fancy smancy word meaning staying in one place. The reason this is important is because once you can become sedentary, then you can create civilization. You cannot create civilization if you're wandering aimlessly about constantly looking for food. So while there's only one big event you need to know about the Neolithic period, it's the Neolithic Revolution, you definitely want to understand all of these points associated with it. All right, so all of that, Paleolithic, the Mesolithic, you don't really need to worry about, the Neolithic Revolution, that's the first kind of set of information you need. And all of it is in pre-civilization. Uh, here's a funny little cartoon. I don't know if you can read the little word there, but it's a little cave family. It says, oh, look, this get better. F in history. You even flunked something not happened yet. Uh, so it's kind of funny. The kid's like, duh. You know, it's kind of like, what are you talking about? So it's kind of true. If you were way back then. You didn't have that much history to study. But that's just the very beginnings of our course. So that's the first bit of lecture, right? You're going to get a lot more, but this is kind of how things are going to work. I'm going to bring pictures, images, keywords, and you'll need to know it all. Now, let me do this. So this is, again, you're, you're going to have a quiz in this class. You're going to have three quizzes during the semester, and most of the quizzes or questions are going to be short answer fill in. So here I kind of put a slide for you. For your, for your first quiz, you'll need to answer many fill-in questions, right? Now, I'm not going to do this for every lecture, but what you could do is, like, think of things I might ask. So, for example, the Venus figure was made during the blank period, Paleolithic period. The land, man, the, the land mass that people crossed during that Paleolithic period or glaciation was called Beringia. So what I would recommend is as you finish taking notes and you go through all your lectures, do this as an exercise, right? Go ahead and start writing out short answer fill-in questions. It'll really help you review your lectures really well. So that's one idea, and you'll, you know, I'm not going to put this for every lecture, but it's something I would suggest from the beginning. The other thing I want you to think about is this. Your quizzes are short answer fill-in. Your midterm are essays and IDs. Now, obviously, we're not even close to having enough information to show you what an entire ID is going to be like, an uh, essay is going to be like, but I could show you right now what an ID is. So for an ID, an identification, I am looking for a paragraph. In it, you are going to tell me who, what, when, where, and why. So maybe pause and try to imagine if Neolithic Revolution was one of your IDs. Pause, write down what you think I'm looking for, right? Just jot it down on a piece of paper. After you jot it down on a piece of paper, we'll go to the next slide and I'll show you what it should sound like and look like, okay? So just kind of think of what it should look like, all right? And this is what a good ID is going to look like. So the Neolithic Revolution took place between 7,000 and 3,000 BC. Took place in many areas of the world. The first place was in modern day Iraq in the region that is known as Mesopotamia, the land between the Tigris and Euphrates rivers. 
Uh, again, I'll put those terms on in the next lecture so you'll be able to use them. Uh, during this time, nomadic wandering Homo sapiens began to recognize seasons. They invented the wheel, domesticized uh, large animals like bulls and horses. They also built plows. Uh, this allowed them to grow their own food, uh, which is known as the agricultural revolution. The reason this is important is allowed the nomadic people to become sedentary, settling in one place, and allowed civilization to begin. So what you see on these IDs that they're going to be, they're not just a little sentence. You're going to have a solid paragraph. If you were to write this out on a regular sheet of paper, obviously when you take the test online, you're going to be typing it into a text box. But if you were to write them out practice-wise, they're all going to be about a third to three quarters of a page. And so that's just something to keep in mind. It's kind of like I'm giving you this right now early in the semester to give you a feel of what it would be like um, as we go through the semester. So that's our first real brief lecture, right? Pre-civilization, uh, kind of pointers on how to study a little bit. The next lecture is going to be on the rise and dawn of civilization, and we'll get into that in our next uh, set of lectures. All right, if you ever have questions, if anything's unclear, please don't hesitate to contact me, right? Email is great, um, whatever we need. If we need to do some sort of video conference too, that's an option. Uh, but, you know, just make sure you're really taking good notes and don't fall behind. Uh, the only last, all right, and here is just one final slide, just a reminder. Um, no. Bye. Bye. You want to say that? But okay. So this is the E, and your reminder is to read. Can you say read Hammurabi's code? Okay. Say read Hammurabi's code. I want again. You want again? No. Just say read Hammurabi's code. Read Hammurabi's code. Very good. Read Hammurabi's code. <laughs> All right. So yeah, just read that. You have a discussion board on it. Okay. Say bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. All right. So there's a little cameo from baby. Uh, so anyways, yeah, read Hammurabi's code and <laughs> and uh, make sure you tune into the other lectures. Bye everyone. Have a good day. Bye. Bye. <laughs>